house. I want the American dream house. Well, they want it, but they don't want to work for it. And then the guys like Barney Frank in, uh, in the government said that, um, uh, what was he, was he talking about? He's talking about wage equality and stuff like that. But Barney Frank sat on the banking committee in Congress and wrote up new guidelines that basically forced banks into giving out loans to people that they knew that they couldn't repay the money. And this is what got us in trouble. And so the banks are being told by an income redistributionist, Barney Frank and others like Barack Obama, to make banks give these people these loans. Now, a loan, I want you to listen to this, a loan is a contract. It is a contract between you and a rich guy. It would be like if you had a rich uncle, and you didn't like the guy, you wanted to stay around him, you didn't like his rich wife, you didn't like anything about him, but you wanted something, and your credit was bad, and you wanted to borrow money, and you went to your rich uncle and said, can I borrow $5,000? Yeah, yeah, pay it off, you know, and he wrote up the little thing, and, and you paid, and you, you start making payments on it. But then you have this idea, well, you know what? He's got too much money to begin with. I think he's I don't think he should have all that money. And so you know what you do? You quit paying the debt. You quit paying on the loan. Because you think, even though you signed an agreement, you gave your word that you were going to pay the money back with interest. You say in your heart, that man's got too much money anyway. What's five thousand dollars going to hurt him? Doesn't matter what you think, it's his money. And that's the reason why you went to him is because he had it. And so you just decide you're not going to pay the debt. You know what that's called? It's called a breach of contract. The Bible is a contract. Salvation is about a contract. And these people standing out there protesting, I want my house back. It's because of the fact that they borrowed money that they could not pay back. The, the bank fulfilled the terms of the loan by saying, if you don't pay it, we're going to repossess your house and sell it out there to somewhere else that can pay the bill so we can greet it. Now you say, well, they got too much money. Yeah, that's the evil international bankers. So what? You sign a contract with them. You don't get your house back just because Barack Obama feels sorry for you. Let me tell you why I'm against socialism. And I've done this before, but I'm going to, I'm going to hit it again. And this is why... I am on the committee to unelect Barack Obama. Matthew chapter 25. Turn in your can of King James. Matthew chapter 25. And I'm going to get through this. I want to get to your emails. I didn't do that the other day, and I want to do that. The kingdom of heaven is, shall be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish voted for the Democrats. No, just kidding. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They had extra. They had plenty. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. That is wealth redistribution. That is socialism. Socialism is government-forced poverty on everybody. It's almost like the idea that they do now in schools. Um, you, don't, uh, uh, you don't try to over-educate the less intelligent kids. You dumb down the smart ones so that everybody's the same on the same playing field. That's absolutely ridiculous. It would be like watching professional sports athletes and the government made the St. Louis Cardinals hire a guy to play first base that couldn't play baseball. But the government felt sorry for him, so you have to put him on first base and he has to play like everybody else. And then the government says, well, now, because he can't play, that's not fair to him. So we want all the other players on the team to play at his level. That's socialism. I'll put it to you like this. In a church setting, 
or in a religious setting. You have people in church. We want people that are not saved to come into our church. We want to teach them the gospel. But socialism and communitarianism, this is why all these churches are called the community church, because they're based on the laws of communitarianism, which is the, the half-brother of communism. Communitarianism says that if all of us are not saved, then none of us should be saved. We have to save everybody or none of us can be saved. Is that biblical? No. The Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's your responsibility. These foolish virgins knew ahead of time that they were going to need oil. They were foolish and lazy and didn't want to do it. Then they started pinning their problems on the ones that were wise, saying, oh, what, what, what kind of Christian are you? Well, some kind of Christian you are. You didn't give us no oil. Because look at what they said. The foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Verse 9, But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. The wise ones said, You want oil? Yes, we want oil. We need oil. Hurry up. Hurry up. We need it, man. You want oil? Yes. Go buy it. You want wealth? Yes, yes, I want, I want the American dream. Then do what your forefathers did, you lazy bum. Get up and go to work for it. But socialism says, we're going to redistribute your wealth. And I'm telling you, if the guy allows to continue his agenda for another four years, this country will be unrecognizable. We'll not only be giving our wealth to everybody, I heard a great analogy of this, and I'm going to turn to your emails here in a minute. I heard a great analogy of this. A professor teaching a political science class decided that he was going to enact, he was just doing it as a reason, he was going to enact socialism, socialist principles into his classroom. So from now on, we're going to take the person who made the best grade on the next test, we're going to give that same grade to everybody in the class. And so some of the kids are going, oh, yeah, man, cool. Because they don't do anything in the class. And they get poor grades. So the next test comes around. The highest grade was a 95. Everybody in the class got a 95. The next test that came around was an 80. Everybody gets an 80. The third test that came around was a 40%. Why? Because the people who were actually studying and working to get good grades said, why should I study and work and earn a good grade if the guy sitting next to me can sleep in class, smoke marijuana out in the hallway, and not do anything and get the same grade? It doesn't work. It never has worked. Time for your emails today. Oh, by the way, who said it? Who said, who said Satan conquered Jesus on the cross? Kenneth Copeland. Uh, this is from Dan Bourne. Greetings, Pastor Mike. I was wondering if there is more to the way technology is shared, if there's something sinister behind the sharing of knowledge in tech or high tech with regards to the fact that every company seems to come up with the same tech at the same time like the mobile phones or like the HD technology, now the 3D in a practical way. I think someone has to share the secrets among the companies. Am I wrong in this? Barking up the wrong tree. Danny, I think you have a good concept. Now, I know that most corporations, when they have an invention, they, they zealously guard that because that's their money. That's their income. Socialism, socialism would say, let's say that um, Sony came up with the most amazing 3D technology they invented it. They spent billions of dollars in research and development. They invented it where you don't need glasses to see three-dimensional television. And the government says, you know, Sony, that's not fair that these other companies don't have that. We're going to take that from you, and we're going to give it to these other companies. So um, 
I think they I think they guard it, but I think also that in the time we're living in right now, it is my firm opinion that spirits are giving inspiration of technological ideas because it has an agenda behind it. Uh, let's see here. This is from Dexter. How you doing, Dexter? Pastor Mike, thank you very much. I always listen to you on your website and through YouTube. Your message always inspire and boost me in every day. All right. It's been almost two months that I started watching and listening on your videos, and I thank the Lord Jesus Christ because I've changed a lot. You, that, hey, you know what, Dexter? Thank you for thanking Jesus because I don't deserve it. Now I always go to church every Wednesday night for Bible study, and I always pray that maybe someday my, my day off will be changed to Sunday so I can attend Sunday church. I always pray for you, Pastor Mike, uh, that you will always have the strength and wisdom to spread the Word of God, and so it is to me. We love you, Pastor. Hey, thank you very much, Dexter. I really, I really appreciate that, but I, I will always want you to go and, and get down on your knees and tell God thank you. Tell God thank you for saving and rescuing Mike Hoggart, all right? That's, that's, he's the one that gets all the praise and all the crowns, but I appreciate it, though. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Eric has something about clones. Hello, Pastor Mike. I was wondering, does a cloned person have a soul? This question came up when you mentioned Heb 8-2, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Wouldn't a clone be... Man, that is an interesting question. Now, Brady and Bradley, and uh, I'm going to share, we shared this last night in the church service. Pray for Brady and Bradley and pray for their family. Uh, their dad was in horrendous pain last night. He was crying, and uh, they want us to pray for them, pray for their mom. They don't know if she has cancer or not. And, it's, I mean, the devil has just been walking all over these two young men. So you pray for them. But they are twins, which means they share the same DNA. They're clones. That's a natural one. But an artificial clone person, does that person have a soul? Wow, that's interesting. Uh, Eric, I, and I, I agree with your verse. Uh, and Eric, when I get to heaven, I'm going to try to butt in line and ask God before you get to it. All right? Anyway, Gary says, Pastor Mike, been looking into Beth more and discovered something very interesting. Her Wikipedia page plainly states that Beth, quote, pledged and was initiated into the Chi Omega sorority. A quick and easy click on the provided Chi Omega link and one can quickly learn of that sorority symbol and mascot. Care to guess? Yup. Skull and crossbones for the symbol, an owl for the mascot, and the coup de gras, the Chi Omega vision statement. Sisters inspired by our values who serve the world while keeping Chi Omega ever at heart. Thank you, Pastor Mike. You have directed me to some much-needed word in these days of my troubled life today. I feel like Lot delivered out of temptation. My heart longs to drive up there to Festus and worship with you and your congregation. Until then, I will worship with you down in the hills of North Arkansas. Gary, I love North Arkansas. Thank you for writing that. And, uh, yeah, I, I never... Well, when I was in Bible college, we had we didn't have sororities and fraternities. We had uh, organizations, uh, and I was an AX, Alpha Chi Epsilon, Brothers in Christ, or something. This is what it stood for, anyway. Uh, these sororities probably are a different thing. The skull and crossbones of the owl. I think you get it. Anyway, good good comment. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. This is Adam.